Hey, good afternoon. Good evening. Hello to all you ATD teams. It is always so exciting for me to see all of you guys here. Um, there's so many I have to scroll through the pages, as I know you all do too. And I love seeing all these names and faces. Um, I'm actually going to miss doing these. We may have to figure out another series to do. So um, we very much appreciate everybody being here today. Um, today, we are going to talk about tricks. Um, and it is um, something that I think is a ton of fun. So hopefully I can share that enthusiasm with you. I am going to jump in and start sharing my screen so we can get started here. Let's go here and right here. Okay. Okay. So we are going to talk about some different tricks, some tips, and some fun things for these COVID safe visits. Um, no matter what we think, things are going to look a little bit different going forward from here. So we may have to think a little bit differently about our visits. For some of us, visits will be just the same, and that's great. Um, for others of us, they're going to look really different. So we're going to talk about some fun things that you can work on with your dogs um, and help them enjoy those visits a little bit more, as well as the people that you are sharing smiles and joy with. So the bottom line on all of this, any behavior can be a trick. It's all about your presentation. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. A um, couple of quick notes, just like the last couple. Um, the photos and videos in this are not of therapy dogs while visiting, so ATD rules are not in effect. Um, for the tricks shown in this presentation, I also have written step-by-step -step instructions. And when we put this on the blog, um, those instructions will be included. So if your learning style is you like to read things, have things in front of you to, to look at, um, that kind of stuff, um, that will be available to you. It's certainly how I learn. So I am more than happy to put that up there for you. Um, and while many of these tricks may feel like they're going to work better without a leash, they all can absolutely be taught to be done while on leash so that they will follow right along with those ETD rules. Um, bottom line, use lots of positive reinforcement for your dog while working on them. Tricks by their very nature should be fun and reinforcing for both you, your dog, and the people that you're visiting. In tricks, there is no incorrect response, just artistic interpretation, keeping in mind that your dog is the artist. Um, and tricks are certainly not a requirement of being a good therapy dog or good therapy dog team, but in these days of alternate visits, they can be very helpful and very supportive of both you, of all of you, your dog, the people you're visiting, and you. Okay. So we're just going to start with some basic things um, that I'm not going to demonstrate for you. Things that um, you can be working on if you're not already in anticipation of visits looking maybe just a little bit different. Um, those front paws up on different things, window sills for window visits, counters perhaps um, up on your arm, um, getting onto different surfaces, maybe a platform of some kind, benches that are outside of a window or on a patio, maybe getting into to a wagon of some kind so that you can better visit some of these people. Sitting or laying down outside and on different surfaces. Um, many of our therapy dogs may not love sitting or laying down on the concrete or on the grass. Um, but if you're going to be doing window visits or patio visits, um, I know locally we had some visits that were happening on their patio when the weather was nice. And so that surface is a little bit different. Be practicing things like that. Um, look at that, meaning teaching your dog to look at a window. Um, windows present an odd picture to dogs, especially those really nice, shiny, clean windows that we see in a lot of facilities. Um, if we have our dogs looking at those windows on cue, it can be a huge benefit to those that we're visiting. And then visiting people at the end of their leash um, instead of being close to you. In order to keep that six feet of distance, our dogs need to typically be at the end of that leash. So the very first thing that I'm going to show you here in a second is the way that I work on that with my dogs. Um, and so these are just some things that I think that we all might want to consider working on, um, depending on where, of course, that you visit and what your population is um, and what your dog already knows. Okay, so we're gonna start with Belle. I'm gonna stop my screen share here um, so I can show you some live demo. 
Um, okay. And keep in mind, this is live. So anything can happen at this point. <laughs> um, and um, Belle is my um, about 13 month old um, Greater Swiss Mountain Dog um, in training, hopefully to be a therapy dog. Um, she is all that and a teenager too. So um, hopefully she will be a little cooperative here. Um, but what I like to do for my um, dogs to know in order to go visit with someone is a hand touch. And I start by teaching them that hand touch with me so that then after they know it with me, I can transfer it to other people so that I can send my dog out to the end of their leash to go say hi to someone. So I'm going to move my chair and move my camera a little bit and work on, show you how I work on hand touch with Belle. Okay, ready? You ready? Good girl. So I'm going to use a verbal marker today instead of a clicker. Um, I like both. That's just who I am. So where I start is I gave her a few treats so my hands smell nice and yummy. Um, and I'm going to offer one of those hands that smell like a treat very close to her nose. She's going to touch it and I'm going to give her a treat from the other hand. Again, good girl. I'm not getting that verbal marker in there. So let me do that here with her this time. Yes. And one more. Yes, just like that. And then pretty soon what I can start doing is on the side. Yes. So that when I go to send her out to visit with someone. Oh, is that harder? Is that harder for you? Yes, good girl. Then I can send her out at the end of my leash to touch that person's hand and interact with them. Good girl, thank you. So that is a hand touch. I also teach it to my big dogs um, because it helps get them moving around. Um, she has this lovely habit of laying in front of the pantry door when I want to open it. Um, so we use that hand touch frequently to get her to get up and move away from, from that pantry door or wherever I need her to move to. Um, so that's a hand touch. I love using hand touch for interacting with people who may not um, have a lot of mobility. Maybe they don't have as much control over their hands and moving them, um, but we can help them with that hand being in one place and the dog can go in and interact with it. Um, I don't have a cue on it, a verbal cue on it, but a lot of people will say things like touch. Um, for my dogs, it's the visual cue of the hand hand being in their field of vision. So the other thing Belle's going to do for you or show you is a chin rest. And the chin rest is something that I utilize um, for resting their chin, maybe on that windowsill or resting their chin on the side of the bed or resting their chin on the arm of a chair, on the arm of a wheelchair. And I, I started again with my hands um, so that they're nice and comfortable with it. And then we go from there. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I do that with her. And I'm gonna walk through the steps a little bit more slowly. She doesn't know this one quite as well as hand touch, so she's not going to be tend to jump ahead like she did with the hand touch. So let me move again. I'm going to sit in my chair to do this one. There we go. Good girl. Are you being so smart? You are being so smart. You are being so smart. So I start by just touching their chin. I don't know. Let me see if I can move a little further. That might make it a little bit better. I just touch her chin. Yes. Because that's a little invasive. It's a little bit rude, right? Touch that chin. And touch that chin. We do a lot of this, you can tell. And I'm going to do it one more time. Touch that chin and give her another treat. And then once I've done that a few times, then I'm going to do the hand touch the way, or the chin rest, excuse me, the way I'd like to do that. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop the treat. Handler error. Yes. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. So then what I can start to do, and we've not moved to this step yet, is I can start to move it to an object. Let me move a little closer to her. She's a little bit harder for her. 
She doesn't want to quite do it yet. But once she knows hand or the chin rests a little bit more effectively, then I can put my hand on my leg and she's going to rest her chin. Oh, good girl. Very nice. Try it one more time. It may have been my one and done. Oh, good girl. Very nice. Good job. Okay. Let me hang on one second. I'm going to leash her up so she can go. Come on. So she can go someplace else and we can have another dog come on in then for the next set. So hand touch and chin rest are very similar, but I use them for two very different things. Um, and we can make them really big and showy if we want. We can make them really simple and part of a different trick if we want. Um, but both of those are nice things um, to um, utilize in the beginning of tricks training because there's so many different ways that we can use them. So let me go back in here. Okay. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about using targets. Um, and then I'm gonna show you one of my dogs working with targets. Um, I use targets to teach the trick and then I might fade the target, meaning I get rid of it, or I might keep it as part of the trick. <clears throat> and I think you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. Excuse me. Um, it is a great way to help your dog understand what it is that we want. And anything can be a target. You can use a spatula, sticky notes, a fly swatter, <coughs> excuse me, um, a pointer, flooring samples, pieces of yoga mat, um, toys, even human toys, baskets, cups, or you can buy a target. They make targets for dogs and you can get one of those. So let's start, do some with Emmy here so you can see them. I'm going to show you a couple of targets really quickly, and then I will show you some of her tricks. So fly swatter, I mentioned, y'all know what a fly swatter looks like. I use these. I rarely use them for flies. I use them a lot for targets for my dogs. Um, kids toys. This one is an absolute favorite. Lights up. Use it a lot when we visit with kids. Um, the dog can push on it. The buttons light up. It makes sound. Um, it's a super fun one for visiting with kids. Um, pointers that teachers use. These are from um, a teacher um, store, a teacher supply store. I use those both. Um, frisbees are a great target too. Um, all different things you can use for targets. Um, sorry, my toy didn't want to shut off. Um, what Emmy's going to show us is something that I like to use are these, the little buttons that make noise or the buttons that light up. So I'm going to show that to you with her. Um, and what I like to, in both of these cases with the light and the sound button, I don't fade the target because that's part of the trick. Um, one of my favorite is the ding dong bat button. And we have used that when we've gone visiting and I let the facility know before I do this. So I'm not upsetting anyone or, or startling them. Um, and we use it as we're knocking on their door to go and visit with them so that it's, um, we make kind of a grand entrance, if you will, um, because Emmy rings the doorbell. So I'm going to use that doorbell. I apologize if your dogs are listening. Uh, my dogs are used to it. Okay. So this is Emmy. You guys have met Emmy before. She helped in the first one. Um, she's my almost four-year-old beagle. She is a workaholic. She's been dying to come out and do this. <laughs> and sometimes she just lays on it because that's she gets a little too excited. Touch it. <laughs> And it doesn't matter what part of their body they use to hit a target. They just need to do it. Good girl. There you go. So that is one of her favorites, obviously. Um, she's figured out she can push the button with her nose, with her paw, and with her belly. So she will offer all different kinds of things. Um, and it always starts off our visits really nicely because everybody's laughing and smiling and are excited to see her. Um, another one that we've been, she and I have been working on, it's a new one for us. So I'm gonna show it to you in progress 
is I've been working with her to do a touch to a sticky note, a target, um, with it, the anticipation being that I will use it for her to look at a picture in a book when we are reading with kids. So um, we started with a sticky note being the target, um, and I'll show you how that looks. And at this point, we are kind of working on it going to a book. I just grabbed a little spiral notebook to work on um, because it was handy. You could use whatever you needed to as you're working on it. So I'll show you where we're at with this. This is not a completed trick yet. Um, we've been working on it a couple of weeks probably. So let me move this again and show you how it looks. So I'm gonna start with just a few hand targets with her. Good girl. Then I'm going to get my sticky note, put it in my hand. Yes. 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 Good girl. Then once she can do that, I'm going to grab my notebook with that sticky note also on it. You get in touch it. There we go. Good job. So then our next step in that trick is getting what we call a sustained nose target, meaning she's going to hold her nose there for a second. And I, you may have seen her do that once or twice where she held it just a little bit longer um, because we have started working on that, but we haven't gotten real far with it yet. Um, so the last thing I want to show you with targets is targets can also be big. Targets don't have to be little tiny things that we carry with them. They can be bigger. So another really fun target is hula hoops um, or some semblance thereof. Sometimes um, on a visit, I've done similar um, with it on the ground with my leash where I ask them to sit inside the circle of the leash. But if I can carry a hula hoop with me or I can stick it behind a chair um, someplace at my facility before I bring my dog in, I might do that. Um, so lots of different things we can do with the hula hoop. Um, but um, I'm gonna show you one going through it Super easy. I use a lure, meaning I guide her through that hoop with the food or having them sit in it. And that's what I would do also if I were to use my leash instead of a hula hoop. Hey, ready, little one? Are you ready? And then this time I'm gonna have her come back. Yes. Oops, sorry, that is my fault. Bad handler. And one more. Yes, good girl. For therapy visits, I do almost always keep that hoop on the ground for them walking through it. Just because those slippery floors sometimes in a lot of the facilities, I don't want a dog to get hurt. So they're jumping through a hoop is really more walking through a hoop. But again, if you present it with great flair and excitement, no one's going to care and it's going to keep your dog nice and safe. Okay, let's go back to the screen share. <laughs> I, I'm seeing, I, I want to go and read through your questions. I'm trying to stay on track though, on task. <laughs> okay. We've been handling the questions and you've actually answered some as we've gone along, but there was a question about that electronic toy that you held up that wasn't a button. Uh huh. If you can maybe show that one more time or say what it is. Absolutely. There it is. Um, it is a VTech toy. If you're at all familiar with kids' toys, VTech makes a lot of. Um, um, look-alike toys like cell phone. This is a VTech tiny touch tablet. Um, so, um, and I, I, we just got it in the kids section at I'm sure Walmart or Target or something. Um, this little thing moves and then it's not turned on right now, but all the buttons push things like that. So Very hopefully Thanks, is asking, has it. This one's a lot of fun, love it. The other thing that's a lot of fun too are um, the xylophones that they can play music on. So that's another one to, to watch the toy stores and the um, secondhand stores, things like that for. 
Okay. Okay, so um, going, continuing along with the target idea, um, I asked my friend Monica, who is also one of your ATD board members, um, about putting this together. This is Quint, her deaf dog, um, and I knew that they did a lot of this particular trick. So she's going to do a little video. She did this little video that we're going to show in just a second on how to teach a wave. Um, I am apologizing in advance. I know that the videos in the Zoom class are a little pixelated. Um, if anybody has any brilliant ideas on how to change that, we would love to hear that. We did some experimenting and we just don't know how to not have that happen because when I watch it, it looks lovely. Um, so I apologize, but again, those step-by-step -step instructions will be included with the blog. So let's watch Monica and Quint with the wave. Oh, and I'm sorry, I started to say, the reason this fits in here is she does start this behavior with a target. So it fits right in with those targeted behaviors. Hello, we're going to work on teaching our dogs how to wave. Um, and for this, you're going to need a paw target. So this one is a little different than the one that I use for him and his nose target. So it is nice for them to know the difference between the two. He is deaf, so I'll be using a visual thumbs up as his marker, but you can also use a verbal marker or a clicker. Um, so, he is very pausy already, so I knew this one would be a little bit easier for him. You might have to kind of slow it down a little bit more if your dogs aren't more likely to use their paws for things. Um, so, I normally kind of start it close to the ground um, and kind of get your dogs interested in it. You might move it around a little bit to kind of get them to see if they'll play with it a little. Um, but once your dogs kind of understand that you want them to touch it with their paw, you're kind of good. And then you can start kind of raising it up higher and higher. Good. So just get them really good at touching it. And then once they're good at that part, then you can start to kind of fade it away. So I'll kind of shorten it a little. Um, you might not hold it as close to them and see if you can kind of still get them reaching for it. Good. Then you can start throwing in your cue. For us, it's a wave since he's deaf. And then eventually you can fade out that completely until you're just getting that wave on the visual or verbal. Um, something else to keep in mind too is since he has fire safety programs, we wanted him to be able to wave at the crowd while I was standing next to him. So we kind of had to reteach him how to do it when he was sitting next to me. So we worked on slowly getting to the side and teaching them how to wave at our side. So that way I can also wave at the kid and say, hello. And he'll do it too. Good job. You say bye. Good job, buddy. Like, why are you making <laughs> so special thanks to them for helping out. Um, and so that is a wave um, and working on that wave. Obviously, if your dog can hear, you can use that verbal marker or that clicker to help mark those behaviors. Okay. So another video, we're going to kind of segue here into some other things now, um, segueing away from the use of targets. Um, and I enlisted the help of another ATD team, um, Tina. Um, this is actually not her ATD dog. When she made the videos, she didn't have her ATD dog with her. Um, but Strax is um, the same age as my Belle, so he's working towards that perhaps. Um, and she's gonna talk to us about um, a few tricks, but the first one she's gonna talk to us about in this video is the spin. Um, I love spin for two reasons. One, it's flashy, it's showy, it looks really exciting, but it's also stress relieving for our dogs. Um, spinning is like taking that really nice body stretch for us um, and can help our dogs if they're feeling a little anxious about something in the environment. Um, so I love that nice spin on any dog that I'm working with. So again, I apologize for the pixelated videos, but remember they are all step by that all of the instructions will be included in the blog. We're going to work on teaching Strax to spin. There are two important pieces of information to have the, the beginning of the training. 
One is that before I ask my dog to spin, I always want them walking towards me. The second thing is we're not going to do the spin directly in front of you. You're going to end up having the spin to start on off to the sides at first. When they're in front of you, when you try to push in and pour, my body is going to cause the dog to back up, which is not particularly helpful. So having them here, spin them, you don't have that body pressure making them move. So to start, <clears throat> I'm going to have a cookie in my hand. I'm going to put it to my dog's nose and ask them to walk with me. I'm just going to take them to the outside and click and treat as they go all the way around. So again, I'm going to take them from in next to my thigh, away from me, and click and treat as they finish. I did. Same thing on the second side. If I teach one spinning direction, I want to teach the other one. So I'm going to switch hands, put my cookie on the left-hand side, get him moving forward. He's going to go away from my body, and I'm going to click and treat. Once I get really good next to you, you'll be able to move the spin in front of you because they'll understand following that cookie um, backwards, and they're not going to be as put off by the forward pressure of you doing that type of move. So that's how I teach a spin. And recapping, have them moving towards you. Spin them to the outside, away from your body, on one of your sides. And that's how we teach spin. Bye. Bye. Okay. So um, I'm going to stop here and do another couple of tricks live with you. Um, so um, Dolly is my 10 year old. Um, I'm going to do bow and the shell game with her. Um, and I chose bow because I've let it go. Um, over the last year, we've not practiced it at all. So it has kind of gone away. Um, just like in humans, if we don't use a skill over time, it's not as good. It's not as sharp. Um, and so um, a couple of weeks ago when I was preparing for this and I thought, oh, I'm going to use Dolly. I'll show everybody how to do a bow. And she's like, Haha, jokes on you. I don't actually know how to do it anymore. So, um, so I'm going to bring her out and show you what I how I work on that um, with Dolly. So she is right here. Like I said, she's my 10 year old. She is my rock solid, love to do therapy dog, work therapy dog. Have to wake her up here a little bit. Dolly, come here, baby. Dolly. Good girl. Um, she is a beagle boxer mix. We did the DNA. So I'm going to move back just a smidge here so we can all see her because she, of course, is the star. Okay, so I like a bow for the same reason that Monica likes a wave. I can, we can communicate with people at a distance if I, my dog can do a bow. So um, I'm a little sad I let it go, but it gives me something to work on with her. So I start off with that treat lure, getting them standing and down, good. And before she goes all the way down, I'm gonna use another treat to get her standing again. Push the treat in, yes. Release the treat. Good. So for every repetition, give or take, I do use two cookies um, because I want that first one. Yes. Yes, good girl. <laughs> She's showing off for you guys. Good. And then I keep her standing because I don't want to be slow and get her all the way into the down. I'm gonna pretend I know uh, she's not gonna actually do it, you little show off. Good girl. Um, so again, to recap, treated her nose to get her standing, nose to the ground, release the treat. Good. Nose, treat to the nose, body down, release, give her that treat. Then we can add the cue. I'm gonna see if she'll remember her cue. Our cue used to be this. Oh, nope, we don't remember the cue. So I'm gonna to have to go back and add to that. So we'll do the bow one more time. Yeah, good girl. Good job, there you go. I'll be back in just a second. So where I'm at with her on this is I'm gonna to have to go in and re-introduce um, the cue to her. And our cue is this. 
for a bow. Um, but she does remember the movement, just doesn't remember the cue to get that movement. So now I just have to put it back together for her in our future training. Um, okay. So the other thing I want to do is another prop trick that I like to do. Um, I, I find that people of all ages love this trick. Um, the dogs love it because it's pretty easy for them, but it's definitely something that you want to practice so that they're not getting all crazy about it while you're setting it up. Um, and that's the show game. So I've got three cups. I'm going to put a treat under one, shuffle them around, and she's going to find the treat. Super easy. I'm just going to do it once or twice. Um, I think you all get the idea. But I want to remind you by showing you this that, again, simple is still great. It's all about that presentation. And it's all about the excitement that you and your dog are sharing with the people that you're visiting um, and that happiness and laughter and sense of humor and things like that, um, more so than the actual trick. So keep that in mind while you're working on these tricks. So I'm going to do the shell game with her. Um, sometimes in um, at, when I'm visiting, we might um, I might set it up on a chair or on a box or on an end table or something like that. I'm going to do it on the floor here for her today. Um, but you can use it, utilize lots of different surfaces for this too, depending on who you're visiting. Okay. You ready, Missy? You ready to do this? Okay. Come here. She thought I threw a treat. <laughs> Down. Oh, she's still going to go looking for the treat. So that's okay. Find it. Good girl. And then I toss a treat off to the side and I'll move. Oh, she didn't even see my treats. Sometimes it's hard to be an older dog. You don't see all those things that you normally see. So while she's gone, I move the treats and I'll do it one more time. Or you can move them around each time. Find it. She's gonna check all three this time. Oh. <laughs> and of course, make sure that they're okay with whatever prop that you use, that it doesn't startle them or scare them in any way. Did you forget to check one? That's a good girl. Good job. <laughs> Good job, little one. Okay. Excellent. See, I'm moving okay. I may regret it later. <laughs> Let me go back in here. Okay. So this is another really fun trick. Um, I teach this to all my dogs for a variety of reasons. Um, Peekaboo. Um, it is a trick that um, is not for everyone. Um, if you, if you as a handler have mobility issues, you may or may not want to do this. Or if you have a really big dog and you're shorter, you may or may not want to do this trick. Um, but that's true of all of them. There, there's probably some restrictions or some um, different things that you might want to consider going into it. Um, but these next two that I'm going to show you are both things that, that I love and I think they're great and they're showy. Um, so let me show show you how peekaboo looks with Tina and Strax again. Hi. We're going to work on teaching peekaboo. Peekaboo is one of my favorite tricks and it's one of Strax's favorite tricks. There are a lot of different ways to teach it, uh, but this is the way that I tend to start. I'm going to take a treat to put my dog in front of me. I'm going to toss it to my legs so they can go and get it. And you have another hand ready there. Oops. He dropped it to catch the cookie going forward just to get them comfortable going between my legs. Once my dog is not nervous, I'm gonna toss that treat, have my next treat down, yes. I'm gonna mark a treat and feed multiple times where my dog is right between my legs. Send them forward just to get them out of that spot. Toss them back, have a treat, yes. If my dog is doing well, I'm going to catch them with a cookie. Yes. So I don't have to toss that treat. Good job. 
Um, the other way I can do it without uh, as many grease specs is I toss the cookie, catch the dog. Yes. Cookie. I turn and catch the dog. <laughs> yes. 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 Turn. Now I have the plain hand as target. Yes. There's that hand target again, everybody. If we're doing really well. I will start taking an empty hand and putting it back there. Yes. And using that just as a target to get them to turn around, then go to work, uh, and come back front. Yes. Yes. Great. And that's how I teach you to get into move. Okay. Um, this is the last video, and then we'll um, talk about some other tricks. Um, a leg weave, I will be the first to admit that this has been a struggle for me to learn to teach other people and dogs how to do this. Um, but I was super excited about this video when I asked Tina to do it, and she sent it to me um, because I'm going to be working on it too. Um, but again, this is a lot of fun. I have seen handlers um, do similar things when they're um, um, in the parking lot, getting ready to go in as their warm up. Hey, we're here to go visit. Can you do a few leg weaves with me? And I always thought that it looked so much like so much fun and it looked so put together. So um, last video and then we'll do some more. Uh, I've got a few more slides to show you. Um, but this is Tina and Strax. And again, special thanks to Tina Parker and her dogs and Monica Callahan or and Strax, excuse me, and Monica Callahan and Quint for helping me out with these videos today. We're going to be going over how to teach a leg weave. Now, there's one really important thing to remember before you get started with this game, and it helps you get off on the right foot, uh, which is that when your dog is starting on one of the sides, whichever side your dog is starting on, you're stepping off of the opposite foot. So if my dog is on my right side, I'm stepping off of my left foot. If my dog is on my left side, I'm stepping off of my right foot. This becomes really important. If you step the other direction, they'll be coming in from behind and it's easy to get tripped up on that. So I start with treats in either hand, both hands rather. I get my dog on one of the sides. I take a step, I put my other hand down, I yes, and treat as they go through. Take another step, yes. 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 Good job. One of the things I make sure that I'm doing is that as I'm stepping forward, I'm making sure my dog is being pulled even or slightly ahead of my foot. If I leave my dog a little behind me, they tend to go around backwards. So it'll come aside, it'll look like this. Get my dog on one side, take my step. His toes are even or ahead of my toe. So it sets him up to be in the right position to take the next step. So just look for it a little bit extra as you go. If you, if you lure the food through and you feed them back here and you take that step, because they're behind you, they're just as likely to go this way as they are to step up this way. So if you keep their toes in line with yours, you're going to have a much better chance of them taking the obvious route. So that's how I tend to teach a leg weave. Um, over time, I just have cookies in one hand and I use an empty target hand on the other side to help them learn to do this without cookies on both sides. Yes. Yes. Good job. All right, that's how I teach it. Bye. Okay. Thank you again. Um, some other ideas for tricks that you can play with with your dog um, just to get your brain juices all flowing and, and trying to figure out some fun things. Um, hide and seek is fun um, where my dog and I might hide behind two different chairs or behind a door, things like that. Um, I also sometimes do with hide and seek, have my dog peek out. That always gets a nice little giggle from whoever we're visiting. Musical chairs. Um, 
tons of fun. Um, we've done this um, at the rehab hospital where we visit, where um, it's kind of a dance party, if you will. Um, and they're all hanging out in, in their, with their equipment in their chairs and their wheeled beds. And Dolly and I are moving around. And when the music stops, we, we pretend to scramble for a chair. Um, tons of fun, very little training involved in that. Backing up is a fun one. Um, Dolly will actually back up a little bit too. That's always fun. I actually use that one on visits quite a lot, especially in small rooms. Um, lateral movement, anytime you get in your dog moving side to side, um, that's that can be a very fun trick um, and, and help with that um, dancing, different things like that. Cross paws. Um, for lots of different things. Um, for Emmy, when she does that, I, I tell her to be proper um, and she crosses her paws. Um, pick something out of a group of things, a toy, their own symbol, a person. So um, that's a takeoff from um, zoo animals, um, husbandry. Um, and um, you can, um, I'm gonna put this, these up here really quick. I don't know if you can see them. Teach them that this is their symbol. This blue heart is their symbol. And then present both of them and ask them to pick out their symbol. Um, always very exciting for people to see your dog think. Um, because we don't always think of our dogs. Or other people don't always think of our dogs in that way, for sure. Um, go find um, treats, a person, an object. Um, I use my keys for that. I almost always have my keys on a visit. So, oh, I can't find my keys. Can you go find my keys? Um, dancing with your dog, I mentioned before, either freestyle or choreographed. Um, rollover is an old favorite. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work on some floors, um, but it is something that um, is always fun. On your side would be another one um, similar to rollover. Um, one of um, my, my first therapy dog's absolute favorites was go get a tissue. I would pretend to sneeze um, and I would have the, the the tissue box there and she would pull one out and hand it to me. Um, holding an object, great for photos, of course, you know, hold that, that thing in their mouth and take that photo or sitting up, begging, sit pretty, whatever you'd like to call that. So those are just some different ideas. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop the share and see what questions we have. Um, Okay, what questions do I need to answer, Kelsey? What's, and if you have any, please make sure you pop them into that chat so that we can um, answer them for you. So one we got, which is mildly unrelated, is which DNA test do you use? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've used Embark. But... That's that's my favorite. Um, I've been really pleased with Embark. Um, and I actually do both health and DNA when I do that. Um, so I get I, I not only get to satisfy my curiosity, but I get a little peace of mind with that DNA, with that genetic testing too. That's great. We've had mostly comments in the chat. So um, one participant uses uh, find the treat in a hand when they're in the hospital, which is a great way to keep the dog's nose off the ground. Perfect, um, that's a great idea, I love that. Uh, using where to get the equipment, and I think one of our board members uh, suggested Amazon has a lot of those buttons that you were using. Right, the, the um, buttons are actually, um, I'm trying to think what I searched. Teachers use them for games, like playing Jeopardy in the classroom. So think about that when you're searching. They're, they're like game buzzers or something like that. That's great. Uh, let's see what else. So, and you've addressed verbiage. Um, just to reiterate, Lori, is that right? That you can really call the cue whatever you want it to be. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's one of those human things um, that we tend to forget. Dogs don't know any language. They don't know any, let me rephrase that. Dogs don't know any human language. So maybe what I call peekaboo, um, well, let me, I'll even, I'll rephrase that statement. What I call peekaboo, which is what Tina calls it. That's both of us have the same cue for that verbal cue. Um, another friend of mine calls that clownfish. And, and, another, and yet another friend calls that one car wash. So it doesn't matter what word you use, just teach them what it means. Um, there is no inherent word that I can say to Dolly that she's gonna be like, oh, I know what that means. I have to teach her what that means. So you can use whatever words you want. 
And Lori, doing the weave, do we do that on leash or off leash? How I like to do it is with my traffic leash. So um, it's nice and short. As my dog goes through, I drop the traffic traffic leash, meaning my 12 to 24 inch traffic leash, um, depending on which dog I have. Um, as they go through my legs, I drop the leash long enough for them to go through. I pick it up. I move forward. They go back. That's how I'm training it. Um, like I said, I am brand new to this since Tina sent me that video, but that's how I'm working on it. I'm working on it with my traffic leash so that as they go through, I can drop it pick it up with the other hand, they go through the leg, I drop it, I pick it up with the opposite hand. A little bit tougher to do on leash for sure. Um, so I'm still playing with that, but that's what I'm currently working on. And a good time to remind everybody that there are specific rules in your rules and regulations about when dogs can be off leash and how that happens. So if you do incorporate a trick that involves off leash behavior, make sure you're following the rules when that happens. Um, one specific question, and if you're not prepared for this, Lori, that's fine. One about how to teaching the crossing of the paws. Um, and if that's too long, we can add it in the blog. Um, you know what? Let me, I'll give you a really quick overview and then I will, um, I will, I will put it in the blog too. Um, because, um, Emmy is the dog that does that and we've got her put away right now. So rather than pulling her back out and, and upsetting the apple cart, so to speak, um, I start with a target, um, that pot, it would be different than this. This is Emmy's nose target, but let's say, um, I'll, you get my paw, and this actually even says paw on it. So there's her paw target. Um, and I start with, we've got the two paws and I get her touching one paw to that paw target. Yes, yes, lots of treats, lots of treats, lots of treats. Then I take that paw target and I put it on top of her other paw and get that, that paw going onto there, paw going onto there. And then I move the target all the way over to the other side um, and get that movement going. And then I start adding the cue. And I start, my cue is gonna be me putting that target there, putting that target there. Then I'm gonna get rid of the target. I'm gonna put my hand there, put my hand there. And then I'm gonna, when she's doing it, pretty consistently, then I'm going to say, um, be proper, be proper, be proper, be proper. Boom. And she does it. So that's a really, really quick overview. Um, you can also do it in the same way that Monica worked on, um, the, the, the paw target with Quint, um, using a longer one, doing the same type of thing, paw target, paw target, paw target. So whatever makes the most sense. Sometimes with those paw targeting things on the ground, um, where we want, ultimately that's what they're doing. Sometimes it's easier to work on it on a raised surface, um, a grooming table, a platform, an ottoman, um, the end of your bed, something like that. So that you're not right down there on the floor nose to nose with them and they're up a little bit more and it, it can sometimes help to train it that way. But I'll try to um, write that one up for you and add that in for sure. Thanks. Writing myself a note right now. All right, I think that is it for the questions. I did, um, there've been a couple questions in the chat about four foot versus six foot leash. And I wanna remind everybody that we do still require a four foot leash if you're visiting. Um, but again, the required visits are waived until the end of June. So if you don't feel safe visiting, please don't visit. Um, and there are a couple of resources dropping in the chat about that. So uh, we want everybody to both be safe and feel safe, which is why we've waived that mandatory visit requirement. Um, there are no other questions, Lori. So uh, a big round of applause to you and to all of your dogs for actually <laughs> performing right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my husband's standing behind me going, what about me? He was the dog oh, wrangler job, behind Carl. me. <laughs> great job, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I, I, I greatly appreciate his help and I greatly appreciate they all did pretty darn good today. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks everybody for being here. This is the last scheduled visit or, or scheduled um, training session with Lori. So we'll, we'll reevaluate since we've had such good feedback and see if we can't get some more education opportunities for you guys. So 